Lee DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry, presents the Cavalcade of America. Tonight's story, Adventure on the Kentucky, starring Richard Widmark as Cincinnatus Shryock. <laughs> WAMU-FM, Washington, D.C. The story I've got to tell involves an incident of the Civil War, to use the Yankee expression. It begins in 1861, September of 1861 to be exact, and I, Cincinnati Shryock, was doing the double job of operating the ferry across the Kentucky River and teaching school in the little town of Versailles. Mr. Shryock, sir. You have a question, Master Drew? Yes, sir. Is Kentucky getting in the war? Uh, our, uh, our homework for tomorrow has nothing to do with current events. It's about Roman history. Now, on, uh, on page 74 of your Roman history books, you'll find the story of Cincinnati. <laughs> yes, that's right. Naturally, this story has a kind of personal attachment for me because it's about a Roman whose name I proudly bear. I'll ask you to read up on that story and be ready to talk on it tomorrow. But, Mr. Schreier, Jimmy says General Polk has a Confederate army right across the river in Anderson County. We gonna join up with him? Well, now, according to the governor, we're taking no sides. Oh. Just kind of sitting on the fence. Who cares a lick about that pussyfooting governor? Hooray for Jeff Davis and the boys in gray! Yeah. Now, hold on, boys. Hold on, hold on there. Hold on. I think it might be well for you boys to remember the wise words of Ben Franklin. Poor Richard says, painting and fighting are best seen from a distance. Now, you boys think that over. Class dismissed. Olive, I'm home. Mr. Cox is here to see you. Oh? We're in the living room. Well, afternoon, James. Afternoon, Cincinnati. Howdy, Father. Hello, son. I was just talking with Olive about Johnny here. He's sprouting like summer corn. <laughs> he can eat pie off your head right now. Yeah, he's a good boy. What brings you over this side of the river, James? I don't remember ferrying you across. I fought it over up near Tyrone. Been over to Lexington. Oh. Business? In a way. You know, General Leonidas Polk has a Confederate regiment at Lawrenceburg. Yes, I heard. Acting on his commission, I've come over this side of the river to recruit a company of volunteers. I want to go, too. Will you take me, Mr. Cobbs? Well, we aren't turning down any healthy prospects, especially if they own their own mounts. I've got the fastest coat in the country. Is that a fact? You're a little young for soldiering, son. I'm not. War is a grim business, Johnny. It's not the fine adventure that you think it is. Maybe not, Cincinnati. But war has come. And that makes it our business. That's why I'm here. I'm counting on you for our company of Kentucky volunteers. Counting on me? That's what I said. You're with us, aren't you? Well, I'm with my people, yes. Then I can put your name on my list. Mm, no, I don't think so. Not just now. You turning me down? No, I'm saying that I don't think I'll join up. Not just now. I don't think I'd be doing right joining up. Let me tell you something, James. War is a complicated business. It's not just soldiering. What is it, then? It's every man doing the job he's best fitted to do. Now, I'm an architect and, and a school teacher and, and a ferrying man, none of which professions has made me especially fit for soldiering. <laughs> little training will take care of that. Might be. Might make a fair to Midland soldier of me at that. But fair to Midland efforts don't make for winning wars, James. It's every man doing what he knows best to do, and doing that twice as good as he ever believed possible. That's shilly shally in language. Is it? It's the kind of language that can cause a lot of trouble. Well, I'm not looking for trouble, James. No? Good day to you. Uh, won't you stay for a bite to eat, Mr. Cobbs? Don't think so, Olive. Well, I... Uh, I don't think I'll be accepting hospitality from... from a man who I label a coward. James. Good day, Olive. Father, he calls you a coward. Do you believe that, Johnny? Well, what else can I believe? He'll spread the story all over Anderson County. Maybe he will, Olive. But I'm doing what I think is best. I'm joining up. You're doing no such thing, Johnny. I am. 
Now, maybe you can eat pie off the top of my head, young fellow, but that still doesn't mean I can't bend you in half and give you a lacing if you deserve one. Now, you'll do no joining up, and that's final. You're too young. But I don't... That's enough, Johnny. I see you was at the door. Hello, Johnny. Remember me? Oh, Captain Morgan. Dad, mother, Captain Morgan. Oh, come in, please, sir. Well, Captain Morgan. How's you, Captain? How are you both? Oh, we're fine, fine indeed. How nice to see you again. Well, this is a pleasurable surprise, Captain Morgan. Well, two years ferrying hasn't changed you much, Cincinnati. <laughs> you look brown and healthy as a coon cub. And I am. Uh, I bet you're glad you gave up architecting in Lexington for the outdoor life. Well, let's say architecting gave me up. I've turned from house builder to ferry captain. Well, it's Providence. Pure and simple Providence that has you owning that ferry, Cincinnati. Why is that? Well, I'm moving the Lexington rifles out of the state. You mean you're going over to the Confederates, Captain? Down to the drummer, boy. But we've got to get across that river before morning. There's a regiment of bluecoats camped right in the county fairground. Mm. Once they get wind that we've pulled out of Lexington, they'll be after us faster than a hound dog after a tabby. How far behind are you men? Well, an hour or two at the most. Mm -hmm. They should be at your landing by 8 o'clock. Oh, but they aren't crossing. But not crossing? No, it's impossible. The river's flooding. My ferry couldn't handle any normal traffic right now, and your loaded wagons would swamp us for sure. But we've got to get across, Cincinnati. The Yankees will be on our tails by midnight. Well, I'm just telling you plain facts. Facts be hanged. We've got to get across. Oh, that'd be mighty risky. Cincinnati, men going off to war expect to take a few risks. I'd rather chance the Kentucky than Yankee rifles at this stage anyway. Mm-hmm. Well, on that basis, I guess we could give it a try. Johnny, go fetch old Billy. Tell him to be at the landing in an hour. Yes, sir. Cincinnati. Mm hmm. Um, I got something else in my mind. All right, let's hear it. Well, I'd like to offer you a commission as a lieutenant in my company. Well, now, that's a funny thing, Captain Morgan. Mm, what is? Jimmy Cobbs was here just before you arrived. He wanted me to join up with Polk's volunteers. Did you? No. Why not? Because I didn't think it was the right thing to do. Not for me. You see, everybody's jumping into this thing whole hog at the moment without thinking if what they're doing is right. Now, as for me, I intend to do a little more thinking. Is there time for that? There's always time for good, hard thinking. Well, that's up to you and your conscience, Cincinnati. Will I see you at the ferry in an hour? I'll be there. Think over what I said. Remember, sooner or later, you're going to have to take sides. Maybe so, maybe so. But like you said, this is a matter between me and my conscience. Billy, you all set? Yeah, all set. Good. Here come the troops and wagons. We'll have to take them aboard at once. Can we do it? I reckon so. Yes, yes, we all set. All right. Captain Morgan, we're ready for you. You can send the wagons and the men aboard the ferry now. First platoon, move aboard. <laughs> As we loaded the first troops and wagons into the boat and started crossing to the opposite shore, I couldn't help worrying about my wife, Olive. She's a strong-minded woman, but I still worried anyway. Had I known what was going on back home, I'd have worried even more. Open up in the name of the United States Army. Open up or we'll break down the door. You break down that door and I'll horse with you into the river. Oh, sounds real friendly, doesn't she? What do you want? Is this the home of Cincinnati Shryock? It is. Are you Mrs. Shryock? I am. We were told your husband runs the ferry below here. Where is he? He isn't here. Where can we find him? How should I know? Are you alone? My son is upstairs. Any soldiers pass by in the last hour or two? I've been asleep. Ma'am, our Yankee troops are marching up this way and they need food and water. We're reconnoitering for provisions. You've got a larder in the kitchen, haven't you? I have, and they belong to nobody but me. Let me remind you, ma'am, that failure to cooperate with us could be regarded as an act of treason against the United States. There are several United States south of here. Incidentally, this particular state happens to be neutral. We're not going to get very far with this one, sir. I would it be violating your neutrality if we asked you to cook some supper just for us? I have three brothers wearing gray uniforms. I'm not going to cook for people who are fighting them. Well, that's up to you, ma'am, but invitation or no, we're staying. Uh, first, though, uh, Sergeant, you better go down to the ferry land and see what's going on. Uh, uh, Wait just a minute. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I won't cook for you. 
But you're welcome to what you can find in the kitchen. Hey. Mmm. Is that fresh biscuits I'm smelling, ma'am? That's right. It is biscuits. Just baked. And there's some ham, too. Help yourself. Now you kind of changed sides in a hurry, ma'am. A minute ago, you were saying you wouldn't cook for men who are out fighting your brothers. I still won't cook for you, but uh, the food is there. And if you just help yourself, well... That isn't as if I cooked it, especially for you. Well, yes, that's exactly right. Now, well, the kitchen's through there. Help yourself. If there's anything you can't find, call up the stairs. I'll be down in a minute. All right, might as well, I guess. Sure, come on. That's real southern hospitality. Johnny. Mother, what is it? Listen carefully. Union soldiers are downstairs. They say a whole regiment will be here any minute. Oh, bedroom. Now, quickly. Get down to the ferry landing and warn Father and Captain Morgan. I'll hold them here as long as I can. You'll be all alone. I'll I... be all right. Now, don't argue. Get to the ferry and warn Father. Quickly. Use the back door. I'll try to keep those soldiers from getting to the ferry. All right, Mother. I'm going. Hurry now. I'll go back downstairs. Come in, ma'am. Uh, let me pull up a chair for you. You know, I was just saying, cooking is something you southern ladies really know how to do. What was that? Door slammed. Oh, it must be the wind. I, I didn't hear anything. Wait a minute. Look. Out the window, that kid running. Who is it? I don't care who it is. He's up to something. Get after him. Hurry, follow him. Yes, sir. Cavalcade of America, Richard Widmark is starring as Cincinnatus Shryock in Adventure on the Kentucky. I finally managed to get all of Captain Morgan's troops across the river. Horses, wagons, and supplies. The Kentucky, southern lady that she is, proved real hospitable to Captain Morgan and his men. She held her temper in. And except for an occasional impish toss of her head, she showed her good manners and high breeding. And then my good mate Billy and I and our crew returned to the landing on our side of the river. Father! Father! Johnny, what are you doing down here? The Yankees. The Yankees up at the house. What? They told Mother the whole regiment's marching up. They'll be at the house any minute. How many are there? Well, just two when I left. Stuffing themselves full of ham and biscuits. Hmm. Well, that's one way of holding an army off. Is Captain Morgan safe across the river? He's across, but it'll take hours for him to move his heavy wagons up over the bluff. We gotta stop the Yankees and keep them from crossing the river. What, hold back a whole regiment? <laughs> That'll take a powerful lot of biscuits, son. Come along, we better get back to the house. <laughs> What's going on here? You, Shryock? Olive? Where's my wife? She's in the kitchen. She's perfectly safe. Olive, you all right? Yes. Where's Johnny? I'm right here, Ma. I, uh, I was just putting up the horses. All right, who are you? What do you want? I'm Captain Watson of the 1st Ohio. You operate the ferry here? Yes. Want to arrange to have my men taken across the Kentucky right away. The river can't be crossed. It's flooding. Sergeant? Yes, Captain. This man followed your son down to the ferry. Tell Mr. Shryock what you saw. Morgan's men were across the river, making their way up the bluff on the other side. Thank you, Sergeant. So, you managed to get Captain Morgan and his men across. Well, didn't you? You heard your men. Morgan's across. If you get Morgan across, you can get us across. I'm going to make a bargain with you. A bargain? Yes. You took Morgan over on your ferry. Now you're going to take us. My orders are to catch up and either capture or destroy Morgan before he can join up with the Confederate Army. And I mean to carry out those orders. I could put you under military arrest for giving aid and comfort to the enemy. I could do that. But I'll agree to forget the whole matter if you do for us what you did for Morgan. You mean use the ferry? That's right. Well, I don't know any reason why I shouldn't do that, Captain. It's a mess, Father. I'm loyal to the state of Kentucky, and our state is neutral in this war. So... I'm at your service, Captain. You're going to do it. I just can't believe you, Father. Someday you'll understand. Oh, I'll never understand. I hope you sink in the river. Johnny, come back. Listen. Olive, please, if I've got If you've been to... forced at the point of a gun, I might understand it. But to make a cheap bargain with an enemy. Olive, I... Captain Watson, you might as well make yourself comfortable while we discuss this. I don't want to discuss it. 
I'm really sorry, ma'am, to have to cause you this unpleasantness. I'm in no need of your apologies. <laughs> Man's got to admire the high spirit of your southern women, Shryock. Olive's folks are all Georgia people. I understand. Now, how bad is this river flooding? Well, uh, you ever seen the Kentucky River, Captain? No. It's a cantankerous old mud stream. Never can make up its mind if it wants to be a crick or a mill wash. More moods than a widow woman. Yes, well, And I... twisty and vexing as she can be, too. Smooth and silky as china cloth, one minute. Back up like an angry cat, the other. Mm -hmm. Well, you know that... Dry river some... You're wasting time. When do we get started? Well, Captain Watson, I'm afraid I can't guarantee my crew. They're all rebel-minded, and they're pretty exhausted, besides. Well, that's no problem. My men can help take over the oars. What we need is a navigator. You can do it? Yes. One last word, Shryock. Mm-hmm. Heaven help anyone who tries to stop us. Neutral state or not, I have ways of seeing that they'll rot in a northern jail until the war is over. Getting some of my horses aboard, Triarch. Oh, I wouldn't do that, Captain. The ferry's overloaded as it is. Billy, get up front with the logging pole. Fend off the driftwood. I ain't gonna do it. Do as you told, Billy. Hooray for Captain Morgan! Billy! Now, who's gonna make anything of it? Well, I think we better leave your helper here on shore. Oh, someone's got to fend off the driftwood. Now, give me the pole. I'll tend to that myself. As you like, Captain. You stay behind, Billy. I hope they all end up as breakfast for the catfish. Well, now, I reckon the catfish has got more sense than to get indigestion from Yankee podcast. You see, Billy's got a temper. <laughs> so I see. All right, now, what do I do? Well, you just stand forward on the prow. If you see any driftwood logs headed toward the ferry, you just fend them off with a pole. Is that all? That's all. Well, I think I can manage that. Yes, I'm sure you can. And if you can't reach one with the pole, just call out to me which way to rudder it. You understand? Yes, yeah, certainly. Good, then. good. Good. You get your men to push us out into the stream, if you don't mind, Captain. Put a few on the oars. Sergeant, get your men ready to give us a shove. Yes, sir. Four of you on the right side, four on the left. Take up the oars. Four on the right side. Right. Right. All ready, Captain? All ready. Then let's be off. All right, you men. Shove, push. Push. Get your men at the oars. Dig in. Row. Watch that driftwood coming at us, Captain. Ah, I see it. I got that one fine. There's another. More rolling down. Here comes the big log. Left. Left. Uh, no, no, no. Right, 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 right off. There's too many. The river's full. Send them off, Captain. Better hold them off. Yeah, well, I'm trying. Uh, left off. The left. No, I said the left. Look out for that log. Look out. Oars in. Oars in. Better get those oars in. Well, there's another one coming. Get down. Everybody down. Don't use your oars. Look, we're, look, we're spinning. Low on the boat or we'll tip for sure. What do we do, Spryock? What do we do? Pray, Captain. Pray loud and pray fast. That's all that's left to do. <laughs> No holding back the river, not then. She took the ferry in her teeth and sent us spinning down river, tearing along like a barn roof in a twisty. How we managed to keep from being swamped, I don't know. But luckily enough, about a mile below the ferry crossing, the river widens out a bit. The flood water slackened off, and a mud bank came into sight. Hold tight. I'm going to try and beat her on that mud bank. Here she goes. All right, you can get up now. We're stuck in solid. Yeah, we're in a fine fix, Troyock. Yes, that's true. How far downstream are we? Oh, I don't know. Quite a ways, I guess. Well, we've got to get back there. Well, now, uh, that presents a problem. Well, we can't leave the ferry mired here in the mud bank. I've got all my equipment aboard. Mm-hmm. Well, if we got to get back, I guess we just got to get back. Well, all right, how? Well, rather luckily, I've got a strong towing line aboard. Towing line? Sure, we'll have to haul her back upstream. Paula, you need mules for that. Men were hauling boats upstream long before mules were invented, Captain. Here's the rope. I'm afraid your men will have to get their feet wet. Oh, what a mess. All right, men, over the side. You heard me over the side, all of you. Here you go, lads. Take the line. Now, just get to pulling. You heard him. Get to pulling. All right, now. 
Good strong legs. Now, how long will it take us to get back to the ferry landing at this rate, Triarch? Well, at this rate, maybe three hours, maybe four. Four hours? By that time, Morgan will be safe in Confederate lines. Quite possible, quite possible. We'll never get to him. Mm-hmm. Cap Watson, huh? remembering back to what you said at the house about how to go bad with anybody who kept you from catching up to Morgan? Well, I'm just thinking, Captain. Do you think you've got a jail up north big enough to hold the Kentucky River? I stayed up to speak with you. Yes? Cincinnatus, why did you do it? Why did you agree to take Captain Watson and those Yankee troops across the river? Oh, Olive, I'm afraid you and Captain Watson both misunderstood me. Misunderstood? Yes. I said that they could use the ferry, but I never said a word about getting them across. Come here to the door a minute. Take a look, Olive. It's the Yankees. That's right. Marching back to Lexington. Then they didn't get across. No, they didn't get across. Seems like there was a, uh, a little accident. Accident? Mm, well, in a manner of speaking, of course. You see, old Billy wouldn't make the crossing. So this Captain Watson, he took over the prow and the logging pole. You mean he tried to fend off the river log? Yes, he tried. But that takes skill and years of practice. <laughs> you know, Oliver Clint forgot to tell that to the captain. <laughs> well, don't go to Shyrock. You done it. You done it. Done what? You held back the Yankees. That's what you done. And that's something the South ain't never going to forget. <laughs> why, why, why? I-, I bet you they'll make you a general. Who, oh, me? No. I'm just a school teacher, so. Uh oh, listen. The school bell. It's past 8 o'clock. Now, what's it going to look like, teacher, being late for school? Sorry, I'm tardy, boys. The, uh, ferry got in late. Now then, uh, back to our lesson in Roman history. Master Connors? Yes, sir? Suppose you tell us the story of Cincinnatus. <clears throat> Uh, Lucius Quintius Cincinnatus was a Roman legendary patriot. He left his farm to defeat the Equi and the Bull Chai, who was threatening Rome from the east and southeast. He returned from battle, put aside his power and honors, and went back home to his farm. Hmm. Well, is that all you got out of the story? Was there any more to it, sir? Well, I'm afraid you missed a rather important point, Master Connors. You see, the story of the Roman Cincinnatus is not a routine lesson in war and heroism. It's something a great deal more. The quality in Cincinnatus that deserves our attention is this. Once he had served his people, he went back to his quiet ways again. You see, boys, like Cincinnatus, we never know just how or when or in what manner the call to duty may come. But we should always be ready. Thanks to Richard Widmark and the Cavalcade players for tonight's story, Adventure on the Kentucky. Next week, the DuPont Cavalcade will present the story of Sergeant Lou Diamond, the fabulous Lebanek. Our story, the Marine who was 200 years old. Our star, William Bendix. Be sure to listen. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade, Adventure on the Kentucky, was written by Robert Tallman and Herb Tunick and based on material from the book The Kentucky by Thomas D. Clark, a volume in the Rivers of America series published by Reinhardt and Company. Original music was composed by Arden Cornwell, conducted by Donald Voorhees. The program was directed by John Zoller. With Mr. Widmark, our Cavalcade cast included Neva Patterson as Olive, Dick York as John, Don Briggs as Cobbs, Bill Post Jr. as Morgan, Les Damon as Watson, and Roy Fant as Billy. Richard Whitmark appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, 
and can currently be seen in that studio's production, Red Skies of Montana. This is Cy Harris speaking. Don't forget next week, our star, William Bendix. The DuPont Cavalcade of America comes to you from the Velasco Theater in New York and is sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry.